first and then people just start dropping around us and everybody uh, tried to stay down and every time like a group would, would get up to try to run away they just start shooting again and it just kept going on and on it was absolute chaos uh my friend kept complaining that uh something had happened to her and i felt her body and i didn't feel anything at first and then we left the venue we hopped the, we actually had to hop a fence to get out of the venue and once we did that we got to where we were going and she kept complaining that something had happened to her we felt her body and we found a wound in her right shoulder. She had been hit. And so it's such a terrifying night here in Las Vegas for, for so many people, and it may get worse, as they say, the death toll is likely to rise with so many people in the hospital in, in critical condition. Police were also looking after this for Mary Lou Danley, who is described as Paddock's wife. They have now located her outside the country, say they don't believe that she was involved in this. Niana? Some more details that he, in fact, had been in that hotel room since September 28th. John, thank you. And at least 406 people were taken to area hospitals after the shooting. Many of them were taken to the nearest trauma center. That's the University Medical Center of Southern Nevada. Carter Evans is outside of that hospital where he's joining us live. Carter, good morning. Good morning. It's only about 10 minutes from the Mandalay Bay, so it's pretty close, but we understand there were about 100 people who were transported here, 30 of them being treated inside that trauma center right now, uh, several people, about a dozen in critical condition. Uh, you can see behind me, police are here. Uh, right now, the only people they're allowing into the hospital are employees. You have to show your ID. There have been people coming by to uh, check on the condition of loved ones. They're, they're not allowing that right now. Uh, they're letting the doctors and nurses do what they need to do uh, inside the hospital. Well, there needs to be a triage program where you assess and you say which individuals are too sick, that is, can't breathe on their own and probably aren't going to make it, and who is very ill, but immediate intervention will benefit from them. And it's a horrible decision to have to make, but you need to start to say, where can I use the man and women power I have to save people? Dr. Regis, how, and so how do how, explain how hospitals rehearse for situations, uh, terrible situations like this, how they prepare? Well, they go through the drills um, where they, they do the triage and rapid treatment. And so the triage is assessing, is there an injury in the brain so that they will not be able to save this patient, even though they are doing some breathing now? Or is this patient, you know, of a situation where I could just plug the wound and, you know, keep them stable until there's time to assess them? Or does this need to be immediately assessed and then the patient will be okay? That triage is critical and knowing. And it's a very difficult thing, obviously, because some people you're going to have to say, these are people who uh, we are not going to be able to save, even though if the emergency room was empty, they would be able to save them. I know, but David, you're making a life and death decision in these cases. With seconds no to question spare. about it. Yeah. And you, you have to start to grade people so that you can save the most people, the most casualties, and uh, have the most people who make it through the event. It is a horrible position to be in, obviously, as a mission and, and we're patients. And we know that every second is critical. We've heard from multiple uh, eyewitnesses that it sounded as if it were 8, 10, even 20 minutes before it seemed like the gunfire finally ended. How big of a setback? was that to transporting victims to hospitals if people were still waiting for uh, the shooting to come to an end? Minutes are everything in these situations. And, you know, obviously the more you bleed, the more your uh, blood pressure is going to be down, the more you need the immediate intervention like a transfusion. And so classically when they get to the hospital, they can be tagged where uh, there's you know, red, yellow, you know, green, and obviously black or gray.